I am a consultant pediatrician. In the chapter discussion on gastrointestinal tract, our next topic of discussion will be abdominal tuberculosis. So, let's get started. So, TB as we all know is an endemic disease in our country and India contributes to over a quarter of the global TB cases. And among all the tubercular cases in India, around 10% of TB cases are pediatric TB and the most common presentation will be the lung or the pulmonary tuberculosis. So, among the extra pulmonary tuberculosis, abdominal tuberculosis is one of the main contributing factors. Some of the studies quote that it is around the sixth common extra pulmonary TB site involved. And tuberculosis of the abdomen involves either the lymph nodes or the gastrointestinal tract or the mesentery or the viscera or sometimes a combination of these four can also be seen. So, what is abdominal TB? So, abdominal TB is defined as tubercular involvement of the various organs of the abdominal cavity either singularly or in combination as I just described above. So, the scope of this video discussion will be we will talk about all these types of abdominal tuberculosis in details. What are the clinical features? How do you diagnose? And how do you approach an abdominal tuberculosis case? Finally, the treatment and complications. So, how does abdominal tuberculosis happen? There are around five common modes of approach. So, first will be the hematogenous spread. So, this is by the lung primary, there is a lung parenchymal involvement and that spreads hematogenously to the abdomen. So, this is the first and the most common mode of involvement. Second most common involvement will be the lymphatic spread. So, mostly it is the retrograde spread and that leads to the abdominal lymphadenopathy. Third will be either the swallowing of the infected putum with AFB or consumption that is ingestion of unpasteurized milk which is infected with mycobacterium bovis. This is very very rare. Fourth will be a contiguous spread to the peritoneum. So, either the organs which are adjacent are infected. So, contiguously it gets spread including either the lymph nodes or the spine. Fifth will be the congenital infection that is child can present to us with an indolent or very an insidious presentation like a long standing fever, weight loss, abdominal pain can be there. Sometimes they can present to us directly with intestinal obstruction or due to a perforation. So, let us see what are the complications of abdominal tuberculosis. So, number one will be the obstruction, intestinal obstruction. So, that can happen either because of the strictures as we have mentioned already in the hypertrophic form. So, in the hypertrophic form or the ulcero hypertrophic form there can be intestinal strictures. So, that can present as small bowel obstruction or because of the large lymph nodes either the mesenteric lymph nodes or the parioteic lymph nodes or the omental lymph nodes they can compress the bowel from outside. So, extrinsic compression can be there. So, the child can directly present to us with a small bowel obstruction like a condition. Next will be the perforation. Of course, the ulcerative condition may present to us like a intestinal perforation. Abscesses can be seen. Abscesses again they can rupture outside resulting to fistulas. So, it can be an enteroentric fistula or an enterocutaneous fistulas or an enterotracheal fistula formation can be there. Other less common complications will be ischemia like conditions like intestinal ischemias, there can be intra abdominal hemorrhage, there can be chylus peritonitis, portal vein thrombosis, malabsorption like condition. So, you should, you should be able to write at least 4 or 5 complications. If you understand the mechanism of involvement of abdominal tuberculosis, you will be able to write all the complications. Okay. So, this is quite a busy slide, but how do you approach an abdominal tuberculosis cases? That is what we are going to explain here. So, yes, when you have a child with features suggestive of abdominal tuberculosis, so first of all, you do the basic evaluation. Of course, you will do the chest x-ray to rule out pulmonary tuberculosis, which is a, an active or an inactive pulmonary tuberculosis can be there. So, do a chest x-ray, retro serology and you obtain the microbiology samples, either sputum or gastric lavage or stool samples. Then you go ahead do an abdominal ultrasound. 
So first, if you pick up ascites, the first thing is do an acetic tap because acetic fluid will give us a lot of important features which will uh, identify the tubercular bacilli. So you do an acetic tap. So acetic tap can be done either ultrasound guided or it can be done as a percutaneous tap. So you do an acetic tap that will be an exudative acetic tap, isn't it? So the acetic fluid which is present in tuberculosis is going to be of exudative nature. So you measure sugar, you measure protein, proteins is going to be very very elevated. So more than 25 grams per liter. You do a serum acetic albumin gradient because of the exudative nature, the SAG serum acetic minus serum albumin minus the acetic albumin will be less than 1.1. And then you send the acetic fluid for gram stain, for AFB, for cultures and for bactic and ADA levels are measured, it will be more than 30. Cellular predominance will be predominantly of the lymphocytes. Again, the acetic fluid, very, very importantly, I have said about the AFB smear, gram stain culture, etc. One thing we should not forget is gene expert to identify the tubercular bacilli, also the resistance. Okay, so once you have identified and you feel that it is of exudative nature, you have identified the TB bacilli, directly go and treat for abdominal tuberculosis. If you have doubt or equivocal findings, then you can go ahead and do the next imaging, CT or MRI. Laparotomy and laparoscopy are not recommended for all the conditions, only when there is a high risk of suspicion of any complications, laparotomy or if the diagnosis itself is unequivocal, then we can go for this surgical approach. So, next this is for the ascites kind of presentation. So, if there are intra-abdominal lymph nodes, mesenteric lymphadenopathy or para-aortic lymphadenopathy or you find that there is a right lower quadrant mass, so you do an imaging. So, now ultrasound we have done. The next imaging you will do is either a CT or MRI and sometimes laparoscopy can also be needed. So, if you find that there are lymph nodes which are accessible, do a fine needle aspiration. So, FNA has to be done and evaluated for tuberculosis. So, if you find an AFB bacilli, if you are able to evaluate, if you are able to find out and identify AFB, then treat as abdominal tuberculosis. Okay. So, non-specific changes. You have done an ultrasound, but there are non-specific changes. The child has gut type symptoms. There is diarrhea, there is weight loss, there is blood in stools, there is abdominal pain, more like an inflammatory bowel disease like presentation. It can be like ulcerative colitis or a Crohn's like presentation. Then you go ahead and do a colonoscopy. So, you see in the colonoscopy, we can directly visualize. So, if there are ulcers present, if there are strictures present and of course, colonoscopy guided biopsies can also be taken and we will try to identify if there is a presence of the AFB. Finally, if there is a peritoneal type symptomatology, again you do an imaging, you can also go ahead with laparoscopy and laparotomy. Our aim and motive will be to identify the AFB and do a gene expert and start the empiric treatment for tuberculosis as soon as possible. So, ultrasound will be the first and foremost important imaging modality of choice in pediatric abdominal tuberculosis and most commonly we will see lymphadenopathy. So, the lymph nodes typical of tuberculo tuberculosis, the tubercular lymph nodes will have this typical feature. What is that? They will have a central liquefaction. So, you will have an hypoechoic area that is very very important and these sometimes these lymph nodes can all come together, they can all conglomerate together to form what is called as an omental cake. So, you will find the lymph nodes, center liquefaction, then you should think of abdominal tuberculosis and of course, ultrasound detects ascites better than... <laughs>